Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on how to use the Firebase Auth and Firestar plugin for Bubble. Uh, in this video, we're going to explore, explore a bit of how to use the authentication part of the plugin. <clears throat> so, to use it, you must have the email and password sign-in method already enabled on your Firebase. And then you will be able to use the, the actions from the plugin. What I did here already was that I got the pop-up uh, for sign up and login methods from the components library from, uh, from Bubble itself. And I configured this text here. Please click here to log in or, or oh, actually it's or sign up to an account before you begin to manage your tasks. And when the user clicks it, it will open this pop-up and now we are going to configure this pop-up to log the user in or sign the user up. Uh, so when the user fills this information here, I want the user to be signed up by clicking this button. So here's the action for that. Sign up to Firebase Auth and I want to use the Firebase Auth action, sign the user up. In this action, I can provide the email from the user, so let's get the input. Uh, actually, it's sign up email value, the password and the password co uh, confirmation here. So let's get the password, sign up password, password here, and the sign up uh, re-enter password here, just like bubbles. Uh, it's important to note that. This password must be at least six characters long uh, in length. Otherwise, uh, Firestore, actually Firebase won't accept it, but it doesn't have to be a super strong password. But it's, of course, uh, always uh, indicated for you to do, do a check on the password strength before creating a, an account. But as this is a demonstration only, we don't need to do that. And there are another information uh, or user info here for its profile that are directly stored on the user from the Firebase Auth service, like the display name, the photo, uh, and a phone number. Um, all of those are optional. I should remove this optional text here later. And but for the display name, we have a we have the input name. If I'm not mistaken, here it is, input sign up name, value. And you can define other, <clears throat> other fields here or uh, other information for the user's profile, but this information will be stored in a collection on Firestore. Uh, so you must specify the name you want this collection to be. This collection will be created regardless of you defining the, any fields for it. And we'll have the, each document on this collection will have the same unique ID from the user signed uh, signed in from this uh, from this account, right? So we want to sign the user up. We want to hide the pop-up here, and maybe we want to say that the user is logged in. The user is logged in. There it is. Uh, let me choose a color for that, remove this, and maybe do a success kind of, uh, of alert. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Let me refresh the page. Click here. Uh, put my name here, Augusto. Uh, my email from study. Any password at least six characters in uh, of length and sign up. There it is. The user is signed up and it already prompted me to save this password. Doesn't need to. Uh, and if we go to our authentication here, we can refresh and we see that the user was created with the unique ID from it. When it was created, when this less is the last time it was signed in, uh, and so on. And the user is here. Uh, it didn't change anything in the UI because we didn't configure it to do so. Uh, to do changes to the UI, we, we would have to listen 
for an event on the user being logged in or logged out. And we have such event in another element we created for this plugin, which is called Firebase Auth, or rather Firebase Auth Current User to match the names we have on Bubble. So if I add this here to, to our page, uh, we have the current user here, and um, let me just make it zero width and zero height so it doesn't mess with our UI. And what does this element do? It provides us with information from the user. We must specify only the name of the collection that was created for the users, which reminds me, let me show it here. Now we have, aside from our tasks collection, we have a user's collection with only one document, which has the same unique ID from our users, uh, from our recently created user, but no fields because I haven't specified any fields uh, to it. And so as we didn't specify any fields, we can leave this all blank and use the information provided here by this uh, by this element to our plugin. This element provides us with uh, two uh, trigger events uh, that are called like so, Firebase of current user, Firebase of user is logged in. You know, only this last part is the important one, right? You can ignore the, the name of the element here, but actually the user is logged in, it will do one thing. And if the user is logged out, it will do another thing. Uh, let me just change these colors to differentiate from the others. So when the user is logged in, we want to maybe, let me see, maybe we want to create a, uh, a custom state here telling me if the user is logged in or not, uh, yes or no and I can default it to no, but if the user is logged in, I want to set this state from the index to yes, and if the user is logged out, I want it to set it to no. And now we can use this information. Uh, let's say this text right here, for instance, I don't want to show it, uh, if the user is locked out, it's locked in actually, because it only prompts the user to log in. So if the user is logged in, we can hide this information. And this logged out one is the opposite. We want to uh, we want to hide it and only show this if the user is logged in. So let's see if it works. Let me refresh the page and there it is. The logout is shown because I am logged, logged in. Uh, and if I click logout, nothing happens because I haven't configured it yet. So let's configure our log, logout event. So the logout from Firebase auth is, uh, is the action, uh, the workflow I created here. And I can use the Firebase auth log the user out method. It doesn't take any inputs and say that user is logged out. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that, I'm a bit, uh, I have a bit of a cold here. So success, the user is logged out. Let's see, refresh our page. And doop, there you go. Now I'm going to log in again. Oh, I haven't configured the logged in yet. Oh, so let's do that. All right, uh, login. Now when the user logs in, I want to use the login Firebase of log the user in here, provided the email from the login form and the password from the login form. And I want to hide the pop-up again and say again that the user is logged in. There we go. Now it should work accordingly. Don't need to save it right now. Please log in. 
So let's provide my email here. Any password right now and there it is. Logged out uh, now appears to me because I am logged in as a user. And what else could I show it here? Uh, could I show here? Maybe, uh, maybe next to this logout, I can do uh, my display name. So let's get this from the Firebase auth current user. Now we see all the information we have available from it. We have the fields from the collection, the basic info from the profile that I said they, uh, that are linked directly for, uh, in the user. So I can provide, for instance, the user ID and uh, and the uh, user name. Oh, not that one. Firebase alt current user display name. And if I refresh the page, I should see just that. And there it is. Uh, my unique ID and the name I provided for the user. And if I click here, I log out and so on and so forth. Um, now we can do what we can do is to only show this element here the element from tasks when the user is logged in so <clears throat> let's do the, just that when the user is logged in oh not that one i can show this element and the and my repeating group i can filter it well uh, oh no re I, rather i want to to filter on the Firestore da data tasks uh, element and I want to filter the field uh, users or rather user now actually let me call this owner the owner I want it to be equal to the current user the current users ID and I will change this this add task uh, workflow to when the new document is created i wanted to create another field called owner and uh, and put the information from the users current users id here and the owner will be of, of type text this is important because you you may think that the, it, this should be a reference to another document but it's not in this case because we want to filter only the current user and the current user is not uh, a document in first place it, it, we create documents for it in the users collection but it is in a, at first uh, an authentication object so we can only provide the user's id as a text here this will be important in the next video as i will explain but for now let's do that and well everything is configured here it should hide this yeah it, it, it hit uh, the group here as i am logged out and now i want to log in again oh i think i missed click here and now i am logged in with no tasks here because i'm filtering them out so it won't show here because none of this uh, documents here has the owner of my my users id but if i add some here some tasks here and some task with a due date and click add there it is and that it was added where is it some task with the owner being my users uh, id so i can so i can create more tasks here more tasks to do and there it is I only see the tasks uh, that are um, linked to my user and if I log out they are hidden because we configured the, the trigger for that now this although this is nice right, as a feature we we have a security problem here because the the code for you to get these documents and info from the Firestore database is available in the front end. So we must configure our privacy rules here in order to uh, protect data from each user. But this will, will require some adjustments to this 
functionality we just configured here. But I will show that in the next video. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.